Welcome back to a new video about current sources. We continue with our MOSFETs and this is our second example. We will discuss the Wittler current source and we have discussed also the similar current source using the BGTs and we will see that now in using the MOSFETs. Of course we will do that step by step in the calculations and verify these in SPI's simulations. So we have the following circuit as said before this is similar to the BGT variation of the Wittler current source. We have two MOSFETs enhancement and channel MOSFETs they are matched so M1 is equal to M2 that means they have the same physical dimensions and also they have the threshold voltage which is the exact same 1 volt conduction parameter Kn is 10 millivolts a uh, milliamps I mean per square volts and the channel length modulation for both transistors is zero now we have two resistors R1 and RS as shown here and we would like to design for a load current which is ID2 of 1 microamp so again a low current that's actually the purpose of the Wittler current source and we will use for that the reference current here of 100 microamps and a VDD we will use here for 10 volts so let's see how we can make this for this circuit so the solutions we start here with the first calculations of course and let's designate this node x and also here node y that will be always helpful for our analysis so we start with the Kirchhoff's current law at node x we know one thing that is the advantage of the MOSFET over the PGTs that the gate currents are zero so this is actually sort of a capacitor for DC so we can say I ref is equal to ID1 plus this but this is zero since the gate of the first and the second transistor is zero so this is important again the gate currents are zero step is the Kirchhoff's voltage law so the Kirchhoff voltage law we can develop from the VDD node all the way to ground we can say the VDD is equal to voltage across R1 using Ohm's law plus the voltage VGS1 which is shown here but we can also make a loop here so that's the VGS1 is equal to VGS2 plus RS times the ID2 as said before. Now one thing we need to note here that ID2 is equal to actually also this curve which is IS2 which is not de depicted here but that's exact same because the gate current is zero as said before. So we can now take these two equations together and then form one equation like VDD is equal to R1 times IRF plus the VGS one which is then these two terms which is shown here now we have now our expression for the VDD the drain current ID2 is given by this expression assuming of course transformation region for operation and now we see the KN and the VGS2 and also the threshold voltage now we can now express the threshold uh, I mean the gate to source voltage of the second transistor here using this rewriting of this expression now we have this expression now when you now substitute the values we have 10 to the power minus 6 which is 1 microamps we have a Kn of 0.01 that's shown here and we have also, also the threshold voltage of 1 volt now when you do now the calculations you will get here 0 plus or minus 0 0.01 plus 1 which will give you two solutions one of them is with a plus 1 and the other one is with a minus so you get down 1.01 and the other one is 0 0.99 which one is now valid now we need to know of course from the saturation region for operation this formula is only valid if your gate to source voltage is larger or equal to the threshold now this one is larger than the threshold which is one that means this is valid but this one is smaller than the one volt so this is invalid so our only solution is 1.01 volts for the VGS2 in a similar form we can go for the ID1 exact same expression but only the VGS1 that's the only change now again expressing that VGS1 we have this ex uh, expression now then let's substitute also the values here ID1 here is remember the IRF and that was 100 micro amps which is 10 to the power minus 4 now again the same analysis you get now plus or minus 0 0.1 plus 1 that will give us two solutions 1.1 volts or 0 0.9 volts again the same reasoning in order to fulfill the saturation region of operation we need to have this larger than the threshold voltage which is now indeed the case for the first 
not for the second one which is now not valid so we have again our solution for the second case so the vgs one is 1.1 volts so we have now the necessary information in order to continue calculating the r1 because the r1 that can be calculated from here like r r1 is equal to vdd or from here vdd minus the vgs1 divided by the irf or id1 now we know irf we know vdd and we have already calculated vgs1 which is shown here so we can now say this is then equal to 89 kilo ohms rs this can be calculated when you use this loop which is actually this part and then you now do the calculations here we need the vgs1 and the vgs2 that's the reason for calculating these two and when you now also use the id2 which is the required load current you get here 90 kilo ohm so we get now our two resistors we required for our design now design is now complete let's bring these r1 and also the rs here and now look at the simulation results and see if this is indeed correct or not this is the circuit again vdd 10 volts r1 here 89 kilo ohms and rs exactly 90 kilo ohms you see the gate currents here which are very small around femto amps so this is 10 to the power minus 16 even smaller we see here the id1 which is 100 microamps which is also the irf that's because the gate currents are almost zero very small and id1 here is here one microamp as required remember irf is not equal to i load or id2 in this case because of this resistor here and that is also one of the effects of the Whittler current source to make the small currents using relatively small resistor values. So this is as expected. But we can also look at a different analysis, which is the load current versus load voltage. So load voltage versus load current. So we will then vary our load voltage and see what kind of the effect it has on the load current. Now for that we will use this circuit. You see we split actually this node we will place it here and we will now sweep this value vl and then observe what the current here is remember the length and the width for both transfers are exact same again because they are matched now let's see what we get this is the plot we get remember the vertical line is our load current and the horizontal line is our load voltage so it is changing from 2 volts to 20 volts that's this voltage and the current we measure which is this current is shown here it looks like there is a huge change but when you look at the scale here it starts around 1.00000002 so how many zeros do we have here one two three four five six and then the final one is two and it goes up like that in very very small steps so this slope indeed not zero but it is very 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 small and this is the reason for uh, using the current source and current mirror configurations to have a almost stable and almost horizontal current uh, values for our analysis now this is again proving that this circuit is also doing nice in terms of stable currents and also we can produce a very small current values using very relatively small values you don't have to go all the way to mega or giga ohms for example all right guys this is our example number two about the whittler current source but now using the mosfets enhancement and channel mosfets if you have any questions comments about this example please let me know i will try to answer them as soon as possible see you next time in another video take care